Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Honda's variable cylinder management system to see what's inside and how it works, but also why VCM causes these engines to fail so often. Now this here is a 3 liter V6 engine from a Honda Accord Hybrid, and this, along with the Honda Odyssey, was one of the first models that Honda introduced variable cylinder management, where you can actually shut off these rear three cylinders here and just drive on the front three cylinders when you're cruising along to save fuel. Now mechanically speaking, on the outside, these engines are very similar to other J-Series engines. Now I've already got another teardown video on why these J-Series engines are actually really good, with the exception of that VCM system, so you'll want to check that out in the description above. In the meanwhile, we're just going to speed through the teardown so we can get straight to the cylinder heads to see what's going on. Oh yeah, this engine's also got 470 thousand kilometers on it so it'd be interesting to see the condition of its internal okay that's not so bad yo this is like brand new this engine's probably been rebuilt so here on the front bank what you'll notice is that there's actually no VTEC this is just a standard single overhead cam design where the camshaft is in the middle here and you have a shared rocker arm for the intake camshafts over here and separate rocker arms over here for the exhaust camshaft. There's no floating one in between for the VTEC with the pin that kicks over. I've got another video on how VTEC works so make sure you click that in the link above. Now coming over to the rear bank here, see everything is much cleaner than the front bank and in my opinion I think this engine has probably been rebuilt at some point because all the bolts to get to this point were pretty loose and easy to get off, not to mention how clean it is under here, which is already a testament as to how bad that VCM system is. Anyway, over on this side here, we got a couple of actuators that are gonna adjust oil flow into this top part of the head here. Now, everything's kind of hidden underneath this channel here, but it also does have a single overhead camshaft. And here you'll notice for the intake side, you have this extra rocker arm over here with a pin in it that's going to engage. And then on the exhaust side, we have two separate rocker arms here. I'm gonna get this engine apart first, and then we'll explore a little bit more on how these mechanisms work. Fram oil filter again and you'll notice there's no VTEC solenoid or screen in there. Come on. Oil pickup looks nice and clean. Yeah, I broke another one. Crap. Yes. Yes. Rod bearings look fine. bearings look pretty clean. So here we've got the entire engine disassembled here. Now we're going to take a closer look at the VCM system, which is on the rear head over here. Now if you remember my J-Series video, the oil pump sits on the front here, driven off the crankshaft. This is going to draw oil up from the oil pickup tube and send it through the oil filter over here before going into the block. Now from the main oil galley in the middle of the block, we have this port over here and this port over here that's going to feed the engine heads the oil. Now over here on the back side of the block, from the main galley down in the middle here, we've got another feed that goes to the head over on this side. This is the one that's going to feed the VCM system. And here's a look underneath the VCM head, which is the rear head on this engine. And you can see that its oil feed is going to come up through this head bolt hole here. Now that oil is then going to come up to lubricate all your rocker arms here and feed the variable cylinder management actuator and oil pressure switch here. Now over here on the head, that hole is going to correspond to this head bolt hole over here, which is what's going to bring oil across to this VCM actuator on this side. Now just like VTEC, the variable cylinder management activation system happens through a solid over here and that's what's going to control the movement of these valves or basically turn off these valves from working when VCM is actuated and that's going to completely cut the pistons off from exhausting and intaking air and it'll also turn off all the fuel injectors to save fuel. Now obviously the VCM system is not actuated so you can see as I turn the camshaft here the valves are going to move normally on the exhaust side over here and on the intake side over here Then, as I turn it once more these two are going to actuate and then finally, these two are going to actuate. So now I'm going to start disassembling the top half of this VCM actuator so we can have a closer look at what's inside. 
And I can just pick off this assembly here. Whoops. Okay, so this piece here comes off, and then this entire rocker arm assembly just picks off of the head. Now if we take a closer look at this roller rocker arm system here, you can see that we've got these rollers here, and this rocker arm that's going to rock back and forth. Now on this side here, if you've got the slightly longer rocker arms, which are for the exhaust side back here, and then here we've got the intake side, which is going to correspond to the valves over here. Now you can see this is a single overhead cam engine, which means that there's a camshaft that runs down the middle here, and you can see as I rotate it here, there's actually just three profiles that have lobes on them, two on the outside here that are for the exhaust, and then this one here 270 degrees apart that go to the intake. Now looking at this roller rocker arm system, they're actually independent pieces from each other. In the middle here we have this roller arm and it's actually shared between these two rockers which are going to lock together with this pin here forming one unit. On the exhaust side, because they're independent, you have two roller arms on the outside here and they're locked respectively with their pins to the rocker arms which are going to activate the valve. So you can see with the rest state with no oil pressure running through here, these are going to be in the locked position and your engine's just going to start up like a normal six cylinder engine. And you can see that the system's got these two big shafts that run along its length here. And that's what will allow these to pivot against each other. They've also got these holes in there which are oil passages that allow oil pressure to go inside of here and deactivate the pins that are locking these together to engage variable cylinder management. Now when variable cylinder management is engaged, it basically is going to turn off the rear cylinders. To do that, the roller rocker arm system is no longer going to press down on the valve springs here to open the valves. And essentially inside the combustion chamber, the valves are going to be sealed. That's going to reduce pumping losses so that the piston isn't wasting energy sucking in air or wasting it pumping out exhaust. Similarly, we're also going to turn off the fuel injector so we can save fuel. And that's it, the complete rear cylinder head is disabled and this engine becomes a three cylinder engine. Now this unit here is what's responsible for engaging the VCM system. The two shafts here are going to plug in over here and this is going to sit on the head here so it can receive oil pressure from this port. Now if I take this apart here, you can see that the oil pressure from here is actually going to travel back here through this hole and then go into this section over here where there's a filter screen. Now if you remember my video on how VTEC works, this is going to look very similar to how the spool valve works. You've got a little filter built in inside of here and there's also a pressure transducer that's going to tell the computer that you've got enough oil pressure up here in order to engage VCM. The oil is then going to travel back through these little passages over here and form this little smiley face around this solenoid. It's basically going to redirect oil pressure over to this port over here and then send it back through these holes over here. Now looking closely, you'll see that that oil pressure is going to be sent through these two little holes inside of here, which are going to correspond to these two rocker arm shafts over here. And you can see the holes inside of there that correlate to them. Now that's going to push oil pressure through these two rocker shafts. I'm going to remove this rocker arm assembly so we can have a closer look at how it works. So as I take it out here, you'll see that there's actually this pin inside of here that's spring-loaded. And that's what's always going to engage with the pin over on this side, so these move together on the rocker arm. Now when oil pressure is applied through the shaft over here, you can see there's a hole to supply that oil pressure. It's going to go inside of this hole over here. And once it supplies oil into this hole, that is what's going to push against the spring pressure this piston over here. So this piston is going to move out and push that piston back into this rocker arm. Now once the oil pressure from this one here has pushed this one down flat, these are no longer engaged with each other and they can independently move from each other. So I've reassembled this here without the pin, so these actually can move independent of each other. Now underneath here you can see that there's a small spring and that's what's going to push up against this roller arm here. And this is going to continue to ride the camshaft's profile up and down, just like that. But because it's now independent from this arm, this arm here has a spring pressure of the exhaust valve pushing it up, which means that the exhaust valve is always trying to stay closed, whereas this guy is just wasting time moving back and forth against the camshaft. Therefore, the exhaust valve is completely disabled and forced to be closed because of its valve spring pressure, whereas this one's just wasting away. Now you'll notice that there's also this flat spot over here, and that's because it's going to follow this camshaft profile, which is basically flat all the way through. There's no lobe like there is on the regular one, so that's why this valve is not going to move up and down with any profile. Now similarly here for the intake side, we've got this roller arm here, and the two rocker arms on this side with these two flat spots. Now if I remove this rocker shaft here. I can remove this rocker arm assembly and you can see what we've got inside here. So we've got this side inside of here which has a piston inside. We've got the center piece which has another piston inside and then we've got the spring-loaded piston on this side. 
So essentially this piston is always pushing against this piston, which is always pushing against this piston that locks all these together. Now when VCM engages, once again oil is going to come through this port over here and then travel in through this little hole here to fill up this rocker arm. That's going to push it flush over here, which is going to make this piston nice and flush. And that's enough to push this down nice and flush. And then these can move independently of each other. Now I've removed that spring-loaded piston, so we can see how these work as they move independently of each other. Now unlike the exhaust roller arm, which has a spring inside of here, the roller arm for the intake side actually has a point over here, which is going to correspond with this spring out on the head over here. So it's also spring-loaded and going to be following the camshaft profile. Meanwhile, these guys are independent of each other, and they're just going to be forced close because of the valve spring pressure. Now we do have these two points here, just like the exhaust side, they're going to roll on the flat spot of the camshaft. So just to demonstrate, here's the roller arm, it's going to sit on that spring over there and ride that camshaft profile, which is this one over here for the intake side. Now meanwhile we've got the exhaust arm that sits on this side of this camshaft, and then we've got the intake arm that sits on this side of the camshaft, and they're both being forced up by these spring pressures over here. Now the bottom of these you can see are going to sit on top of this camshaft profile over here, which is just a round circle, there's no lobe on this. So that means that these valves are just going to be riding around as that's turning, but they're not moving anywhere. Now as you can imagine, this is kind of a complicated system, and it basically does the opposite of what VTEC does. VTEC gives you more aggressive cam profiles. This one gives you flat cam profiles so you keep your valves closed and save fuel. Now you think that saving fuel is a good thing. The VCM system has been known to cause a lot of problems on many V6 Hondas. Now you see as this piston is moving up and down because it's still connected to the crankshaft, it's going to be drawing a vacuum in the combustion side of the chamber here because all these valves are closed. It can't suck in any air nor can it push out any air. So now you're left with basically an air spring inside of here. Now naturally the cylinder walls are going to be coated with oil as it's supposed to because this needs to be cooled and lubricated. The oil is going to now have a tendency to escape over to the vacuum side because it's just getting sucked past these piston rings and then you end up with oil on the wrong side of the combustion chamber. Now when you got excessive oil build up inside of here these pistons aren't firing anymore because you're just cruising along so it's not like it's just burning off in each cycle it's just getting clogged up inside of here and oil is going to start to build up. Once you got oil building up in the combustion chamber it's going to start to foul these spark plugs. Now this engine isn't in too rough of shape this here is the front head you can see that the combustion chamber chambers are black but the spark plugs are not really fouled up. Over here we have the rear head. Now this is the head that has VCM. You'll notice that the spark plugs aren't really fouled up but yes they are black. Now in vehicles where VCM has caused a lot of damage you'll notice that the spark plugs in the cylinders that deactivate are really fouled up with oil causing misfires in those cylinders only. Now not only will this issue cause the piston rings to wear out over time but in some cases the rings could actually line up here allowing oil to just slip right through and then you end up burning a lot of oil between oil changes. Now here's a little bit of anecdotal evidence. You can see that these three connecting rods here are nice and clean and almost look brand new but they actually came from the front half of the engine whereas these three at the back here that are a little bit more tarnished came from the three cylinders at the back of the engine that had VCM. Holy. Now another thing I noticed is that the piston slap and the wear on the skirts here are way more on the front pistons than on the rear piston. You can see the difference there, these are way more scored. Now just like VTEC, the VCM system is also very sensitive to oil quality and the oil pressure. You can see that it has to move through all these small little passages and holes throughout the head in order to engage those rocker arms. Now we know that V6 engines are somewhat balanced, not so much side to side, but definitely back and forth. Now when you do switch to three cylinder mode, that introduces a whole new level of vibrations because you're just running on three cylinders alone. So now in order to dampen vibrations, Honda is using these active engine mounts that are electronically controlled in order to dampen out those vibration frequencies from traveling through the subframe and the body of the car. Now of course this VCM system is going to turn on and off and it's going to take its toll on these engine mounts and that's why a lot of owners complain that there's a vibration when the vehicle is in eco mode and VCM is turned on and that's just because these engine mounts are starting to wear out a lot faster than they would if we didn't have the VCM system. And of course these engine mounts are not cheap to replace, they're a couple of hundred dollars because they're electronically controlled. In addition they've also implemented active noise 
noise control through the speaker system in order to dampen out the weird sounds that you get from a three cylinder. So the question is what has Honda really done in order to fix this issue? Well they did issue a technical service bulletin and the first thing they do is they flash the computer in order to tune the VCM not to work as frequently so that it doesn't burn oil as much and can take you out of warranty. However that software does not completely disable VCM because of emissions regulation. Now if the oil consumption and the misfires get really bad then Honda is going to replace the piston rings for you to hopefully fix the issue. Now many Honda owners complain that we should just disable VCM altogether. Obviously Honda is not going to do that for emissions regulations and we should just revert back to the old single overhead cam simple design but maybe add a little VTEC in there like the older Hondas. Now some Honda enthusiasts have come up with the idea of adding a resistor to the engine coolant temperature sensor in order to vary its temperature reading so the computer doesn't think the engine's fully warmed up and it won't engage VCM. Now if you're considering to buy a Honda or an Acura with one of these VCM V6 engines, make sure you keep up on your oil changes as well as check the oil level to make sure it's not consuming too much oil and the spark plugs that they're not fouling up causing misfires because a ring job is really expensive when you're out of warranty. And that's a wrap on how the VCM system in Hondas work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.